everybody, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, I might be ruffling some feathers. I'm going to be talking about a topic that is uh, maybe, I don't know, could be considered a little faux pas to talk about right now, but I wanted to talk about overlanding culture and kind of some of the changes that I've seen in the last few years. And I want to start by saying I don't want this to come off at all as preachy, but I mean, all of this is my opinion, right? So that's why I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you guys on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you guys hang out. Just let me know what you think. But there's definitely been an overwhelming sort of swing towards the negative in the overlanding culture, online, Facebook groups, forums, things like that. Um, and it's kind of gotten to the point where it's, it's a little discouraging and it, it kind of feels weird, I guess, to even have to talk about this, but I, I had some thoughts on it. I just kind of wanted to shoot off the cuff and, and kind of talk a little bit about that, you know, the importance of being positive and, and sort of helping out newbies and things like that to encourage them to get into it. Um, and so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. So I'm going to cover a few different topics related to that. Um, but again, most importantly, it's, it's meant to be a conversation, right? Like I'm not some guy that's up on a high horse that's telling you what you can and can't do, but rather I'm just talking about my opinions and kind of the things I've noticed. And, I, and I'd love to hear from you guys and what your thoughts are, whether you agree or disagree. Either way, right? Just let me know. Um, before we dive into the episode, of course, just wanted to touch on my featured partners. Um, Trail Built Off-Road, that's where I got my wheels and tires. There will be a link in the description below to my setup. So if you're interested in getting some new wheels and tires, I will say the experience was awesome. Their website is really super cool. Um, it's fun looking around on there and, and pairing things together and stuff like that. And their customer service is great and the prices were great. So super definitely recommend them. There's also some notes in the description below for uh, how to apply my All Things Overlanding name if you do end up buying something through there. Um, so check that out in the description below. Overland Addict, of course, talk about him all the time, but great, great overlanding online store and physical store in Missouri. Um, if you need anything to do with, with overlanding from, you know, uh, rooftop tents to scottles to anything like that, definitely check him out through that link in the description below as well. Um, Last US Bags, again, I've been working with these guys for a long time. They make amazing quality overlanding recreation bags. Um, so if you're interested in anything like that, definitely click through that link below as well. And then, of course, Northology Adventures, uh, fantastic free digital magazine. It's totally free, guys. It comes out once a month, and it's beautiful. Um, so definitely go click through that, sign up for that newsletter, that, that free uh, magazine every month, and check that out as well. Um, so, But now let's dive into this episode. So overlanding culture. Um, you know, when I started a few years ago, I, I actually made quite a few videos where I talked about how cool it was and how much fun it was as a completely noob overlander, right, to post something up on a Facebook group or post something up on a, a forum, an expedition portal or an overland bound or something like that, and just get like a plethora of like really pleasant, really nice, really helpful responses and things like that. Now, of course, you have to do your bare minimum, right? You have to do your due diligence. If you don't even search for anything and it's something that gets asked every single day, you're going to get flamed for it. That's just how it works, right? So this does not apply to people that just wander in and say, what size tire can I fit on my XYZ vehicle, right? Or, you know, what rooftop tent should I buy with no information about like what their plans are, how many people that's going to need to sleep, where they're planning to go, anything like that. Um, so I understand that sometimes those questions get annoying. Um, but you know, when I started, it was so positive. Everybody was super down to earth. Everybody was, was super helpful. And like, I made a lot of great friends from that, right? Like it, it grew my personal sort of sphere of, of people that I knew that did this thing that not a lot of people do. Um, it taught me a lot. It also taught me like how to navigate these groups, these Facebook groups and these forums. And, you know, again, how not to get just absolutely destroyed if you deserved it. But it, what's kind of, what I've kind of been noticing that's been happening is now it doesn't matter what you post right? Like whether it's you post something that's different from everybody else, you get lit up for it. If you post something that's the same, why'd you do the same thing as everybody else with a forerunner? You know, like no matter what you do, there are people that are just literally just delighting and kind of looking for ways to tear people down. And again, it's not, you know, I mean, I'm a big boy. I can take some online, you know, people giving me crap and it's nothing really has happened to me personally. I'm more concerned with like, 
you know, the brand new people to overlanding that, that do come in and they do their research, but then they ask a question or they post a picture of their build, you know? Um, I saw a guy recently who has kind of followed me for a little while and we've had a few conversations and he's an Xterra guy too. And he posted up a picture of his rig and he's done a lot of work to it and it's really cool. But he put a solar panel on his hood just like me. And immediately, like, the first couple of comments were just vicious. Just like, why is that solar panel sitting on your hood? Or where are you going to mount it? You know, that kind of stuff. And, like, there's just no point, right? Like, you're not, it's already done, right? He's drilled holes in his hood. I've drilled holes in my hood. I've done a lot of things that are questionable, and I've learned from them. Um, but, like, just there's no reason for it, right? Like, if you don't like it, you could ask a, a polite question, or you could say something like, hey, you know, what? what's the reason that you mounted it on the hood, or, or anything like that. But just that vitriol and that hate, it's just uncalled for, right? And, again, this I don't mean to sound preachy at all with this stuff. Like, I'm just a guy like everybody else on, you know, Overlanding USA or any of these big Facebook groups like that. Um, and I don't even think that was the the group where that, that sort of interaction happened. I think it was an Xterra one. But, like, it's just, it's almost become cool or kitschy to, like, just be a jerk all the time for no reason. And my worry with it is, like, if I'd been in that same position, if it was, wasn't three years ago or four years ago when I started looking into Overlanding and starting to learn about Overlanding and it was now... I'd probably be a lot more turned off. I'd probably be a lot less likely to pursue it. And I understand that it's not everyone's, you know, responsibility to like be good stewards of overlanding necessarily. But like just in general, right? Like this is changing everywhere on social media. I think it's a social media thing where like everybody just feels like they're keyboard warriors, you know, they're exempt from any sort of repercussions. But, you know, that's a real person on the other side of that computer, right? And they're really proud of their work and they're trying to do it again, unless they like... I don't know, cut a hole in their roof and put a piece of plywood over it. Okay, I get that. Again, you don't have to be a jerk, but you can be like, you know, I just don't understand what the purpose of that is and I worry about the, you know, the longevity of your roof on your vehicle. Like, that's a different response than, what the hell were you thinking, you idiot? Yo, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You know, like, it's just the way that we portray ourselves, right? It's the way that we act and, and treat each other online. Um... And again, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate on this. I'm probably going to get a lot of comments. That is another sort of thing that I wanted to talk about here is, so not only do we all need to, in my opinion, try and be a little bit nicer, try and be a little bit more patient with new people. Um, if you are one of those new people and you're watching this video, because I do have a lot of newer folks to overlanding that, that kind of subscribe to my stuff, um, then part of it's going to be, too, developing a tougher skin, right? Like, if this is something you're really passionate about and something that you enjoy, you're just going to have to get used to that online hate or avoid it. Right. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've thought about getting off Facebook just because it's so toxic and so political and so negative all the time that like if I didn't have the all things overlanding page, I probably wouldn't be on Facebook just because it's there's just too much talking. You know, we need less talking, more support, more helpfulness, more caring for each other. Right. Not to get too mushy, but like it, it's just if you don't have anything, it's like our parents said, or at least mine, because I'm old, you know, back in the day, like if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Right. Um, there are a lot of posts that I see that I'm just like, oh no, this person's going to get lit up and I just keep scrolling and I just, I don't go in there and wait in and say something because it's not, it's just not worth it, right? It's not my place. It's, I'm not the one to judge anyone. So, um, but if you're a newer overlander too, and you start to see that stuff, definitely don't take it personally, guys. Like there are always going to be jerks out there, guys and girls, sorry. Um, there are always going to be people out there that are going to look to tear you down because it makes them feel better because they don't have a rig or because their rig is kind of a mess or because they're really stuck and they're kind of jealous that, you know, you went out and, and did the work and, and made your rig cooler. Um, so, you know, and that applies both ways. It's really interesting to me that like, you see that on like differing builds. So like a lot of the times people will be like, Hey, I bought a something weird, right? Like there's the one guy that has like a Porsche Cayenne because it's a Porsche, right? Everybody's like, Ooh, that's super cool for the most part. Now, some people are like, why would you ever do that? That's stupid. Why would you waste all that money? They're unreliable, right? Like all this garbage that people spew. But the thing is, it's cool, right? Like I love when people do different rigs. I mean, I did an Xterra partially for that reason now. And Xterra is not exactly an unknown and no one's ever done one, right? But it's definitely more rare than a Forerunner or a Tacoma or a, a Jeep, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but then it goes for people doing different things. They just get bashed, right? They get bashed because why would you choose that? Why would you select that? You should have just got a Forerunner. You should have just got a Land Cruiser. You should have just got a Jeep, Gladiator, you know, whatever the case may be. 
Um, there's always that. But then it also goes the other way. I mean, I literally saw a guy earlier today post up that he just bought a TRD Pro 4Runner. And everybody's like, okay, join the club. Everybody's got 4Runners. Oh, they're stupid. You should have kept the other car that you had before. You know, like, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to get hate. So again, kind of to both sides, right? To the people that are doing the bashing, like, get a life, you know? There's there's better things with, for you to do with your life. If you're not that into overlanding and your job or you view your job or your goal as just tearing people down, then why are you even here? You know, like, we don't want you. I, I'm just going to say it. Like, I, I'm not interested in, in getting to know you if you're just going to be mean to everybody else and, and just tear them down and... And it hurts the, the term overlanding. And I know there are there are almost too many people in overlanding nowadays, right? But let's be honest. Most of these people that are on these groups, myself included, if we're lucky, we might get to go once or twice a month, right? So it's not like it's not like by us being nice and by us, you know, helping people get into overlanding that they are, you know, just going out and destroying national monuments and things like that. And, you know, one thing that I do want to start focusing more, and I feel like I need to focus more on my channel is treading lightly, right? Like making sure that you're doing everything you can not to leave trash behind, not to get off the trail, not to cause any damage to the environment. And it's one of the reasons why I've kind of stopped sharing spots. I used to share spots a lot, but now I go back and a lot of those spots are trashed and stuff. So I can talk about it in general, but I'm probably not going to share spots going forward because people tend to trash it. Unfortunately, it's, I don't think it's the people I'm giving it to. I just think that other people must see it or hear about it and then they go out and trash it. Um, so being respectful, taking care of the environment, taking care of our trails, taking care of our national forests and all our natural resources, being nice to each other, um, but also having a thick skin and being ready for it because no matter what I say, it's going to continue, right? I'm trying to help here, but it's probably just going to continue. Um, Another thing that I see a lot that that I kind of wish that we could all just forget about is the definition of overlanding. I probably see two or three thre threads on this on a Facebook group every day, right? Where somebody says, well, I read this definition of overlanding and I think this one's closer to accurate than this other one. And then you have just people meow, 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 back and forth, right? Both sides. Oh, why do we have to define it? It's just car camping. There's no such thing as overlanding in America. There aren't different cultures. You can't ever overland if you're not in a foreign country. You know, if you're if you're not dependent on your vehicle for more than six months at a time, then it's not overlanding. Guys, who cares, right? I'm exhausted by it. I'm exhausted from it. Um, again, I'm not going anywhere, and I'm not necessarily complaining. I'm just saying, like, it literally doesn't matter, right? That's why I always say in my videos, like, my definition of overlanding is the vehicle-dependent travel part. That's, that's all I care about. As long as you are dependent on your vehicle when you go out, yes, I go overnight camping trips very frequently. And no, I wouldn't really call that overlanding, only because I'm not really relying on my vehicle. I could stop at a McDonald's on my way. I could stop at bathrooms on my way out. It's an overnighter, right? Typically, it's going to be a longer trip. But again, it doesn't matter. In my opinion, still just getting out, testing your gear, testing your setup, optimizing and continually working on your setup, modifying your rig to make it better, more efficient, without you know being detrimental to the overall longevity and, and reliability of the vehicle, of course. Um, that's the fun of it, right? Um, so again, even when I go on my overnight trips, my overlanding setup still helps me because I've got a fridge, I've got a stove, I've got a drawer system where I know I have all these certain tools, I've got my chainsaw, I can process wood. It just makes the trip even better, right? Even if it's not technically an overlanding trip because it's just a camping trip for a night, I am still semi-reliant on my vehicle. My rooftop tent's on the roof, so pretty much everything I need is in the vehicle. So again, not worrying so much about definitions and just getting out and exploring, right? Getting your Honda Civic and go out and drive some forest roads and see some cool sights, take some cool pictures, meet some cool people, hike, you know, check out nature, spend some time out there, take your family with you, spend time with them. It's just, we should worry less about defining everything and worry less about arguing about the definition of overlanding and worry more about just trying to find ways to get out, right? Trying to find ways to find a job that's flexible enough to allow you to do that if it's a passion of yours, right? Um, so that's another thing, the definition of overlanding, just kind of getting old, right? And again, post up in the comments below, let me know what you think. If I'm totally wrong, I'll, I'll listen to you, but I don't think I am. Um, <clears throat> And then, you know, last, just overall, again, the, the tone and the tenor of these conversations has completely changed to where, again, a few years ago even, it was like, hey, I'm Fletch, I just bought an Xterra, I've never been overlanding, how do I find spots, right? Let's just throw that out as an example. A few years ago, it would have been like, hey, you know, welcome, glad that you're getting into overlanding, I've always liked those Xterras, they're really cool, um, 
you know, here is a link to a resource that I've used to learn about Gaia. Or here is a website that talks all about overlanding stuff. Or here are a couple of apps that you could check out and do your research on and learn which one you like, right? That would have been the conversation a few years ago. Whereas now it's like, hey, I'm Fletch, I'm new, I just got Nextera, and I don't know how to find dispersed camping spots. And it's like, geez, do you know how to use the search? Let me Google that for you. Oh, Xterras are dumb. Why would you ever buy an Xterra? Should have got a Toyota. Like that, I mean, that's literally, if you think about it, right? If you just look at those two, those two different responses, right? There is almost no value in that second set, right? Like no one is providing any value anymore. They're just trying to tear everybody down, right? They're just trying to be jerks. They're trying to make people feel bad for asking a question. Um, again, I understand if you've been here for years, like I have, like it can get a little annoying to see the same questions over and over again. But here's the thing. We can choose to be better, right? We don't have to wade in there and, and start throwing elbows at everybody and, and trying to crap on everybody. Just scroll past it if you're fed up. Let the other ones of us that are willing to help out post up and help the person so that they can then have a fair shake and a fair try at giving overlanding a shot, right? Um, and I mean, that just kind of applies to everything. And again, not trying to be preachy at all. This is my opinion. I'm an Indiana boy. I was raised by my parents to be super polite and respectful. I say, ope and excuse me and I move out of everybody's way and I'm I'm too polite probably but but I mean the the fact of the matter is like I love overlanding and the more long trips I go on and the more new places that I see and the more you know beautiful sites that I get to take a photo of and and share with my family and friends and share with you guys via this channel like the more fun it becomes like I'm I'm getting more and more interested in overlanding the longer that I do it but again, I could have had some bad experiences at the beginning and this never would have happened. I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. I wouldn't have my exterior all decked out the way that I do, which is, you know, not everybody's taste. People might think it's crappy. A lot of people ask me why I took the, the cladding off the back. It was a personal choice, right? I, it was easier to get to rust and I kind of think it looks cool. Kind of looks crappy too. I get it. But it's your opinion versus mine, you know, and it's my truck. So, um, so again, I think that we all need to work on the overall tone of our conversations without me being preachy just you know me too like if i've ever said anything crappy to you i apologize and and you know call me out on it and i'm happy to to step back in it's the same with comments on videos i think and this is kind of the last thing i'll talk about and then i'll wrap it up but as someone who has you know about a year and a half ago started doing youtube stuff with no idea what i was doing i've watched hundreds of hours of youtube videos about editing shooting video transitions effects you know color grading like all kinds of different things that I had to learn that have taken a year and a half and I'm still just barely competent, right? Like that's, I honestly would say that I'm just barely competent. The, the only thing that I do is I make videos consistently. I'm so into it and I enjoy it so much that I am able to make myself do it at least once or twice a week. Um, but that has taken hundreds and hundreds of hours of time every week, you know, putting together the podcasts, this podcast slash vlog. I mean, I'm going to record right now for 20 to 30 minutes probably. And then it's probably going to take me an hour and a half or two to edit everything. It probably takes another half hour to an hour to create the cover art for it, to write the description for it, to put all the links in it, to put tags in it, to make things easier for you guys to find related videos, to put links to products that I talk about and stuff so you don't have to look for them or search for them or Google them um, after you watch the video. Like all that stuff takes time. So, I mean, I would easily say every week I'm probably six to eight hours into this just to make one or two videos, one podcast slash vlog and one shorter like gear review type video, right? And, and I'm not complaining about that. I'm not asking for anything for that. I'm just pointing out that there is a lot of work and a lot of growth and a lot of practice that goes into this stuff. And I feel like YouTubers are almost even a bigger target than just, you know, everybody else on the, the boards and stuff where I constantly get stuff. I'm actually, I've been pretty pleased that most of my comments are positive, but there are definitely quite a few out there that are just plain rude, right? Like they're just rude and it's like, or people are like, well, I'm not paying you. Like a lot of people, a lot of the comments, let's, let me give you an example. A lot of the comments on my stuff comes from people talking about me mentioning my partners up front, right? And it's usually something to the effect of, oh, this, the video doesn't start till three minutes or something along the lines of like, well, he's sponsored. So, you know, he must not be a real person or, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to subscribe to someone that has sponsors because, you know, then they're just in it for the money. And let me just say that, like, again, as I mentioned, I've been, so for the last year and a half, I've been putting six to eight hours a week minimum into simply just shooting and editing and posting videos. 
That's not to include all the money that I've spent on all the camera gear, all of the time that I've spent, all the trips that I've taken, paid for gas, all that stuff, right? And those are fun and I enjoy them. I'm not complaining. But I'm just saying, like, everybody acts like these YouTube videos cost them something. You know, they're like, I'm not paying for you to live your dream while I sit here and work a nine to five. And it's like, yeah, but you get to watch the videos for free. And there's, I just don't think people understand that. And again, I'm not talking about for myself at all. I know what goes into my stuff and I still feel like I'm very, barely passable. But there are some other people too that are like killing it with their videos. Just tons of time, right? Like they may take a weekend long trip and then take them two, three weeks editing. It's like uh, Revere Overland made that Overland movie. That thing was two and a half hours long. You know how much, like how much footage he had to shoot to make a two and a half hour long video that made sense? I mean, that's, it's like, I think he said it took him like a month to edit that thing. And it was like, 100 gigs or so of like just raw footage that you have to literally watch through, comb through, cut together, tell a story with it, right? Like it's just not nearly as easy as everybody thinks. Um, again, I'm only saying this more so for other people because I see a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that are getting into this and getting are new to this want to start YouTube channels, right? It's just the nature of the thing. It's just like me. When I, when I started this a few years ago, I was like, man, these YouTube channels are so cool, you know? Off-Road Action, Expedition Overland, you know, all these channels. I was like, these are so cool and I would love to do that someday. Now, obviously, I've settled into my own niche. I will never be one of those guys. I'll never have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And I totally get that. I am more of like an informational gear and budget-minded DIY type channel. That's just what I am. Um, but the thing that I love about that is like, yes, I may only have, you know, 4,300 subscribers as of the time of recording this um, and not 20,000 or 50,000 or 100,000, but... The guys and girls that I have are like super dedicated, right? They're super into it. And I love the conversations that I get to have with you guys about, you know, like, hey, I'm a normal person that works a job like you. And I, I want to figure out more ways to get out there. I want to figure out more ways to stretch my dollar further um, when I'm buying gear. And I want to, you know, do it yourself, some drawers so that I don't have to spend thousands of dollars. You know, that kind of stuff. So where I'm going with this to kind of wrap it up is, you know, whether it's a YouTuber even if it's a brand new one, even if they don't do a great job, even if you're looking at my stuff and you're like, eh, he could do a lot better with those camera angles or, you know, his he his delivery's really stiff or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever you don't like about it. I want everybody to kind of just think about like what's going on on the other side of that camera, right? Or what's going on on the other side of that screen. If it's someone posting on a, a Facebook group or someone posting on a forum or something like that, like there's a real person that is making themselves vulnerable there, right? They're, they're sharing something with you. They're asking something of, of the group. And there are two ways to deal with it. You can be a jerk and you can try and tear people down. And I know that's always going to happen. Or we can just think about it and we could say, you know what? I wouldn't want to be treated like that either. And, you know, I, I want people to think of overlanders as like always helpful, always willing to go above and beyond, always willing to, you know, do what they can to help others. That's been my experience in real life. Again, for the most part, that's been my experience online, but I just felt like things were shifting and it's kind of gotten to a point where it's like, I just see it so much every day that I felt like I kind of had to do an episode about it. So again, view this as a conversation, right? Post up in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Call me out. Be mean to me if you want. It, uh, you know, I have thick skin. It doesn't bother me, but I just love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear your opinions on this thing. And, um, and I hope that we can all work on that, right? I hope that we can all, every time we see one of those posts as, as, you know, worn down as I am by, can I fit 35s on a Jeep, whatever, you know, like just having that resistance to wanting to jump in and be mean and saying, you know what, this guy's brand new. Let me direct him to the search bar. Let me direct him to these, you know, let me do a search for him and say, hey, look, if you click on this search thing up here, here's where you can find that information. This gets asked quite a bit. You know, let me know if you have any other questions, that kind of thing. Just let's all just be nice to each other, right? Not being preachy, just my opinion. Um, so that was it, guys. Um, again, I hope that that was interesting for you guys. I hope that that kind of makes the, the gears turn a little bit and get you thinking. Um, but, you know, post up below and let me know if, if you've seen stuff like that. What have you seen? Horror stories or maybe really good stories. Maybe people that have been really helpful or groups that have been really supportive and, and great to people. Um, and kind of your thoughts. So if you're new to the channel, if you haven't, you know, watched this on YouTube or listened to this on the podcast, I am on Instagram, Facebook. There'll be links in the description below. Come hang out on that YouTube podcast, wherever you want, right? Wherever you want to hang out. I'd love to have you guys in the comments. I'd love to have you sending me messages, emailing me, things like that. Um, the website is down below too. I do have patches and stickers that I sell. So if you're interested in supporting the channel or you're into patches and stickers, because all of us overlanders are, definitely click on those and check those out as well. Um, 
And then uh, last but not least, again, if you're on YouTube, click that subscribe button, click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. Um, I try to do a couple a week. So, you know, gear reviews, do it yourself mods, Xterra modifications, cause that's what I drive. Um, all that good stuff is gonna be coming your way every week. So thanks again for listening. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for commenting. Let me know your thoughts on this topic and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Take care guys, have a great week. Thank you.